family get in? I need to physically keep my family safe. Like, like from a day to day, like at a house, you know, you don't feel that immediate sense of like safety as much. Like you're safe in your house. Like thankfully, I mean, we live a pretty sheltered, safe life at home. Um, but like on the boat, just you're out in the elements, and it's just so much more, so many more things to worry about. So I think that that was heavy. That that wore on him a lot. Well, actually, when the kids got back and they went to school the last two weeks of school, we made them make presentations to give them. Hazel can give the presentation. Alex, you want to give me the high sign when we start? He, you know, it's, it's a third grade level. It's a second grade level presentation. Like, here are the animals that I saw. Good morning, everyone, especially to our friends online. This is our sound check and our video check. Let us know if you can hear us. And we will be beginning in about five minutes.
Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you are all here with us this morning, here in this place with us online. We have several um, people watching, some from far away as South Carolina. You can turn around and say hi to Marcy. She's online, Marcy. Ohio. Um, other friends, Betty and Maynard and Nancy, Louise, Lindsay, Bernadette, Lydia, we're all uh, so glad you can join us in this way. So I have a couple of announcements and other people have announcements too. We wanted to let you know the men's group is meeting next Saturday at 8.30. All men are welcome downstairs in the vestry. And they keep telling me that Harland is cooking. I don't know. I don't want to spread a rumor, but there is food. And Julia, I'm going to invite you to come up and say a word about the crop walk. And there are uh, flyers downstairs about them. Yes, the crop walk is next Sunday after church. So I think there's about at least eight of us at this point going. Uh, we'll be leaving right after church to go to Portsmouth and join a larger group. Uh, we have t-shirts for those that are going to march. So uh, if you will, are going to march and I don't have your size, would you let me know? And anybody's welcome. So we can still take sign-ups if you would like to walk with us and get a t-shirt. So see me at coffee hour. It's all Thank about you. the t-shirt. <laughs> and you may have received a letter. If you haven't, you probably will. Uh, your stewardship team has sent out a Bridge the Gap letter inviting you to, to give an amount that you feel comfortable with to help us catch up on some expenses from the past year. Um, it's our way of doing stewardship differently, and we want to celebrate at the end with this. Sometimes we have stewardship campaigns, and then, and then that's it. And we want to have a celebration. So we're having a big potluck on Saturday, November 4th at 6 p.m. More details to follow. But we are just going to celebrate. Celebrate being the church. Celebrate the ministry that this church and you all do. Just celebrate being God's children and um, all we do together. And now Chris has an announcement. It's been a couple years since we've had a Christmas concert properly in the church itself. So we're going to bring that back this year. And we've chosen the date, December 17th. Yeah. And it's always a production of some sort. We've had really large ensembles in here and really small groups of musicians just buttressing the choir a little bit, and accompanying us. So I've yet to pick the ensemble, but there will be some live musicians here with the choir. Um, we used to do it comparatively pretty late at night, 7 o'clock concerts, but I, I'm willing to bet we're going to plan this one for 4 or 5, so Yay! everyone can come out and we can have kids. <laughs> um, we, we did that uh, some of the last few times that we had the concert. We did it earlier on a Sunday, and it worked really well. So the date's December 17th, um, and we generally accept some other people joining our, our choir. So there, there have been, almost every year we've done the concert, a few folks who ask to join because they do sing and they like the Christmas songs best of all. You don't have to be a weekly member of our choir to join us for this concert. So if you're interested, come approach me and we'll get your email and we'll add you to the list so you could sing with us in the choir loft that day. If December you can 17th. make a joyful noise, you are welcome. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. And we have a, a oh, yes, Nancy. If you want to be a greeter, Nancy, show up and smile at 930. That is it. That is it. So thank you. We, we like that. And we do have a special guest for our mission moment uh, today. Uh, Maria Elena has flown in with her, her friends, and we are so glad. Uh, she is from Honduras, and we'll be talking about Amigos 
and um, Daisy's children, and Maria Elena has wonderful stories and a, a passion for feeding children um, all around Honduras. And the York Association in this church has been a part of that for, it's going to be close to 20 years, if you all can think back to when he started doing buckets, and more on that later. All right. Let's be joyful, let's be glad, let's bring our hearts to worship this morning. Will you please join me as we call ourselves to worship? You are the light of the world. Let our light shine wherever it is needed, in hidden places, in darkest corners, in South Berwick, Rollinsford, Berwick, Rochester, Summersworth, And now this is the place where you get to add if you don't see your town here. In New York, where else? Farmington, Israel, Dover, Rochester. And I even have online, we mentioned South Carolina. Elliot, look where we are all from. I think we have someone online from Arizona. Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, in Honduras, Africa, in Haiti, in our lives and in our world. Fill our worship this morning with the Holy Spirit, O oh God, so we can let our light shine with heart and soul and mind and strength. Let us worship God. So we are going to sing a song that I often leave for the end of service because it's, you know, it's kind of joyful and rousing. And we are going to sing it first just to get us in the mood. We are walking in the light of God. The words are on the back of your bulletin. Let's stand and sing together. And this is a chance to move, clap, whatever you feel led to do.
dancing. We can do this. A little dancing. who have worshipped in Honduras and in Ghana and in other places, there's a lot of hand clapping, there's a lot of dancing, there's a lot of hands in the air, and worship goes for two to three hours. I'm just getting you ready. Just getting you ready. So, let's join in our gathering prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. All together. God, we remember with wonder and joy that your spirit is reaching everywhere, rejoicing in all living things, touching what is wounded or ill with healing power, gathering in the lonely, the lost, the least, soothing animosities, creating and recreating a vision of hope. Come now, Holy Spirit. Let our worship rejoice in you and lift our hearts and bind us in one family of loving grace. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our joyful response for God being present in our lives today is halle, halle, hallelujah. And those are the words. There's no trick song. ask you to run around with a mic. This is a time to share any joys, any concerns, uh, anything you'd like us to lift up and be praying for today. And Hazel's going to start that way. Julia. I have a dear friend from church here. Some of you may remember her, Marge Hastings. She made that a beautiful quilted sign over there, and she's done a lot of na uh, needlework around the church. Um, she's 94 years old and living strong, except her heart is failing, and she was just recently put on hospice. So I just ask for prayers for her and her journey. Thank you. Prayers for Mark Hastings. Anyone else? Betsy. 
prayer concern, a, a prayer joy that Mayor um, Maria Elena is with us and that the women of our church and community have made washcloths to be given to the children. So a joy to actually be able to have her here and that we can present those to you. So, thank you. Ivy. A joy that yesterday Mark and I gathered with all of his siblings and some of his nieces and nephews and laid to rest his mom and dad mm -hmm in Webster, Mass, and we had a lovely celebration. Thank you. Henry, you want to raise your hand? Hazel's coming to you. Pray for the people in Israel, and I guess like Afghanistan just had a wicked earthquake, and the Ukraine. Thank you. People in Israel, the Gaza Strip, where? Palestine, Israel and Palestine. We have a joy. Our anniversary is coming up very shortly. It's been three wonderful years. This seems like yesterday. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. All right, now this way. Cheryl, will you, did you have a hand up? There you go. I just like prayers for a friend of mine. His name is Jason, and um, he recently lost his dad. For Jason on the loss of his dad. And Harlan, did you have a? Just uh, I'd like to raise up my wife's aunt Lillian, who is going through her end of to her end of life, end of life, um, and uh, just prayers for her. For Lillian. Thank you. Oh, and right back there. Julie. Thank you. Um, very joyful period for us. My niece, Amy, and her husband, Tom, um, adopted a little boy, Ira, two months ago. So we're all very excited about that. Um, and we had a 99 birthday celebration for Dave, my husband's stepdad, my stepdad, too. Um, he'll be 99 on the 13th, and he's heading to Florida before that time period, so had all of us get together yesterday, and so much fun. Um, I do lift him up. He's had a lot of medical changes in the last few years, and he's been strong as an ox for 96 years, so he does have some heartbreak over losing sight and mobility and, and not being the man that he's been for 96 years, so I lift him up that way, too. All right. Thank you. And I, I was asked to pray for a little boy named Carter who's having surgery. So we pray for Carter. I think you should say Okay. It. <laughs> um, we have a joy that we wanted to share that Hazel is going to be in the district musical again this year. And um, the musical is Elf, the musical based on the movie. It's a really fun show. Um, and that's uh, coming up November 10th, 11th, 17th, and 18th. So we'll put a, um, a poster downstairs. Um, we'd love our church family to come see that. And okay, she uh, she's playing the role of Elf Number One. Woo! Impressive. <laughs> and a department store kid. Uh, that's great. So I will go, and if you want to go with me, you want me to get tickets, let me know. We'll have a whole cheering section for you. All right. So let's see. We've got, for our kids, we've got Hazel and we have Nora, but this will be um, a message for everyone. And Hazel, I might have you help me with this, okay? So when it's time, I'm going to ask you to lift stuff out of the bucket. So, and I'm going to guess if anyone remembers, Amigos started probably like 20, it was, it was about 20 years ago, I think. So about 
23, 25 years ago, all the churches, UCC churches in Maine had a partnership with the churches in Honduras. And we agreed to care for each other and to get to know each other. Because when you get to know someone, what happens? You care about them. How about that? So we had mission trips there. And on these mission trips, pastors wouldn't have a house to serve the churches in the town they were serving, so people would go and build a house for the pastor, a little brick house. Or maybe the pastor had a house, but there was no church building. So people would go and build a church. And on this trip, a man named Dan Ramis, who is a very tall man, he said, hey, this is great that we're doing this for the pastors and the churches, but these kids, these kids are going hungry. They were eating so little, and when they weren't at school, they were barely eating at all. They'd have like one meal a day. Can you imagine if your mom said, I'm sorry, all I can do is an egg and, and a little piece of chicken today? And you loved your mom, so you'd say, okay, but you were hungry. So the kids were hungry when they weren't in school, June, July, and August. So Dan said, we're going to feed kids. And this is what we're going to do. Every church in the York Association, in York County in Maine, and I think they extended it beyond, is going to get a bucket. You go out. We got ours at Tractor Supply, but many others got theirs where? Home Depot. How did you know? That's where you get. And in this bucket, we had a list of food to get. Will you kind of just show people, be my Vanna White, just show people? There might have been spaghetti. You could just put that right down there. We had rice that was in there. And beans that we bought and tuna fish that we bought. Peanut butter, yeah. crackers, all sorts of stuff. And if you remember those who were doing this, it's kind of empty, I know. I, ha I had peanut butter for breakfast. And we filled it up to the tippity tippity top and we put the lid on it and then we'd sit on it <laughs> to close it. It was so full. So we did this for I don't know how many years. And this church filled up probably well over 200 buckets, if I remember. And everyone would bring them in. And then the buckets would go on a tractor trailer. And the tractor trailer would then put it on a cargo ship. And then it would make the long journey to Honduras. And then Maria Elena would be there with a pickup truck and load it on to the pickup truck. And then she'd go to how many cities and villages and towns? Many, many, many in the mountains. And they would be unloaded, and then they'd have cooks, and the kids would have food. Well, I got to go. I got to go with Dan Ramis to Honduras. It was the first time I'd ever been anywhere, really, other than Canada. Not that there's anything wrong with Canada. So there I am in Honduras. And we are going with Maria Elena and her family from town to village, village to in the mountains. And we were watching the cooks cook and the kids eat. And this is what I learned. Sometimes, most places, there weren't enough bowls to feed everyone. So you know what they did? They shared. They shared. I would eat, then I'd give you the bowl, and you would eat, and then you'd give it to someone else. That's how it worked. One place we went to, the woman in charge had the kids brush their teeth before eating. There weren't enough to toothbrushes for everyone, so the kids shared a toothbrush. And that went on and on. Well, eventually it got too expensive to send food in buckets. So what did we start doing then? Money in buckets. And the money was sent over to Honduras. And Maria Elena bought food with it. 
and saved so much money doing that way. They could buy all kinds of food. And the kids were fed. And then COVID hit. And we all went into lockdown. And the kids are still hungry. So the York Association brought Maria Elena here. And she's going to go to all the churches, as many as she can, and breakfasts, and chili fests, and Bible studies, and everywhere we can get her. And she will tell the story, the stories of the kids and how we need to feed them, because that's what partners do. We take care of each other. So I will have my little tractor supply bucket downstairs if anyone wants to put in a little money. You're welcome to. And no, it goes straight to the kids. And then along came Daisy's children after Amigos. And now Amigos became Daisy's children. And we thank Sharon and Maria Elena for that. So there's the story of 25 years in three minutes. Let's pray. Holy God, we are partners in creation, caring for each other, and we are so grateful when we have that opportunity to give, to share, to love. Amen. All right. You are going with Ivy. And maybe Nora is going, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think Nora is leaving Nancy's side. I could be wrong. You want to go? Let's be together in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the blessing of this day, this new day. We thank you for all our blessings, those seen and unseen. We are thankful for partnerships, ways to connect with brothers and sisters outside of our own communities. And we are grateful for the chances we have to give of ourselves and how that opens up our world and our eyes. There are many things to pray for this morning. We pray especially for Israel and Palestine. We are so shocked and devastated that there is war. And we pray that there will be a path to peace, that diplomacy will have a role in all of this. We know things are so complicated, dear God, and we trust that you are at work even in the midst of this. And we pray for Afghanistan, Hawaii, Florida, all places where there are too many natural disasters. Help us to take care of creation as we take care of one another. And you have heard us lift up people in places this morning. Help us to trust that our prayers are heard and that by praying, we draw closer to you and to one another. Help us to picture our prayers lifting up to the heavens. 
hear us now as we come to you in this time of silent prayer. these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to invite Maria Elena to come forward and our friend, tell me your name again, Rosana, who is a Spanish teacher who works with Sharon and she's going to be our interpreter if needed. So, Marie Elena, I'm going to have you come right up here. And Rosanna, if, can you use that mic there and we'll be able to hear both of you? Come on up. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Uh, you know me, I am Maria Elena, I'm from Honduras, and I work in Daisy's children's program. And I want to, quiero decirles en esta mañana, she wants to tell you all this morning, algo muy hermoso que dice la Biblia, something beautiful in the Bible. San Juan, it's found in John 15. Este mandamiento les he dado. This commandment I give you. Que, que se amen los unos a los otros. That you love one another. Esto es lo que la Biblia dice. This is what the Bible says. ¿Cuántos lo creen? How many of you believe that? Amen. The glory is for God. Bueno, mis amados hermanos, he tomado este corto tiempo. Dear love, beloved brothers and sisters, I've taken this time. Para hablarles de un programa hermoso. To talk to you about this beautiful program. Llamado Los Niños de Daisy's. Called Daisy's Children. Este programa nació hace 15 años. This program started 15 years ago. En el corazón de Dios. In the heart of God. Luego pasó al corazón de tres mujeres valientes. Then it passed on to the heart of three brave women. Que dijeron. Who said. Edme aquí, Señor, ¿qué quieres que yo haga? Here I am, Lord, what do you want me to do? Y Dios nos dijo, and the Lord told us, Ayuden a los niños pobres de esta comunidad. Help the poor children in this community. Vivimos en la comunidad más pobre de Honduras. We live in the poorest community in Honduras. Donde los niños no son tratados como niños where children are not treated as children. Los niños son tratados como perros. Children are treated as dogs. Pero no como perros de aquí de América. But not like dogs here in the United States. Sino como perros de Centroamérica. Like dogs in Central America. Muchos niños en nuestra comunidad estaban muriendo por desnutrición. Many children in our communities were dying of malnourishment. No podían ir a la escuela porque no tenían nada que comer. They couldn't go to school because they didn't have any food to eat. ¿Cómo se puede aprender con el estómago vacío? How can anyone learn with an empty stomach? Los niños se dormían en la escuela. Children would go to sleep in school. Y mi hermana en Cristo, Sharon Beckwith, and my sister in Christ, Sharon Beckwith, notó esto. Noticed this. 
Entonces comenzó el duro pero hermoso trabajo. Then the hard but beautiful job started. Y decidimos alimentar a los niños de la comunidad. And we decided to feed children in the community. Niños que apenas tenían tortilla y café. Children that could barely eat tortillas and café and, and coffee. ¿A quién le gusta ir a la escuela solo con café y tortilla? Who wants to go to school just with coffee and a tortilla in their stomach? Daisy's, uh, los niños de Daisy's es un programa muy hermoso. Daisy's Children's a beautiful program. Donde se ha ayudado a miles de niños. Where, where thousands of children have been helped. A salir de la escuela y llegar hasta high school. To finish, to finish school all the way through high school. Y lo hemos hecho gracias al hermoso corazón que ustedes tienen. And that has been done thanks to the beautiful, generous heart of many of you. Este programa no es de la señora Bedwis. Este programa no es de María Elena. Este programa es de ustedes. This is not a Sharon Beckwith's program or a Maria Elena's program. This is your program. Porque todos tenemos que ayudar. Because we all have to help. Porque es un mandamiento de Dios. It is a commandment by the Lord. ¿Ustedes creen en Dios? Do you believe in God? ¿Creen lo que Dios dice? Do you believe what the Lord says? Alimentemos a los niños. Feed the children. Amémonos los unos a los otros. Love one another. Hace 15 años. 15 years ago. Alimentamos a niños que ya son adultos. We fed children that are now adults. Y yo me los encuentro por, do, por doquier. And I find them everywhere. Ellos me abrazan y me dicen, gracias, pastora. They hug me and tell me, thank you, pastor. Por haberme ayudado. For having helped me. Recientemente tuvimos una gran tragedia en nuestro programa. Recently we had a big tragedy in our program. Una madre se suicidó porque perdió su pequeña plantación de maíz. A mother uh, committed suicide after losing her, plant, her small plantation. Y lo más terrible que quería que sus niños murieran con ella. And the worst was that she wanted her own children to die with her. Porque sabía que no iban a tener nada que comer. Because she knew they were not going to have anything to eat. Porque el maíz para ella es lo más importante. Because corn for her is a very important thing. Son niños de nuestro programa, Daisy's Children. Del programa de ustedes, Daisy's Children. So now these are children in our program and in your program. They're Daisy's Children. Es una situación tan difícil para nosotros. It's a difficult situation for all of us. Pero sabemos que no estamos solos. But we know we're not alone. Que tenemos personas hermosas como ustedes. We have generous people like you. Con corazones buenos. With a good heart. Para ayudar a los niños miserables en nuestra comunidad. To help the needy children in our community. Ustedes no se imaginan. You can't imagine. Lo difícil que es ver a un niño todos los días desmayándose en la calle por no tener alimentos. How difficult it is to see children um, almost passing out in the streets due to lack of food. Ustedes no se imaginan lo difícil que es ver a los niños enfermos de la mente por mala desnutrición. You can't imagine how hard it is to see children with mental, getting even to the point of mental illness due to malnutrition. 
Pero yo les digo a los niños, no estamos solos. But I tell the children, we are not alone. Muchas personas en América many, están pendientes de nosotros. Many people in the U.S. are helping us along. Yo creo en Dios. I believe in God. Yo creo en ustedes. I believe in you all. Que nos seguirán apoyando. That, que you, no, that you will continue to support us. Que nos seguirán ayudando. That you will continue to help us. No es para mí. Not, no es, not me. No es para nadie. Or es, anyone else. Es para los niños que representan el futuro del mundo. It's for children that represent the future of this world. Yo doy gracias a Dios, doy gracias a la pastora Linda. I thank God and I, I'm thankful to Linda, the pastor Linda. Doy gracias por la vida de Sharon. I thank God for, for Sharon's life. Y doy gracias por la vida de todos ustedes. And I thank the Lord for every, all of your life also. Porque sé que ustedes tienen un corazón hermoso y seguirán con nosotros. Yo lo creo en el nombre de Jesús. Because I know that all of you have a beautiful, generous heart, and I believe all of this in the name of Jesus. ¿Ustedes lo creen? Do you all believe this? Amen. Amen. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Dios les bendiga. May God bless you all. Call her Pastor Maria Elena. You can see why. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Rosanna. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. And somehow this will all tie in to our mission moment. Somehow, I have faith. Let's listen to God's holy word. This is Jesus speaking. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And at about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers, call them all, and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. So when those hired at about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. And now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to, gi to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. May God bless our hearing, reading, and understanding of this very difficult scripture passage. Amen. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about grace. 
It's right up there on our vision statement. When the vision team created that statement, welcoming all, sharing God's love, and living in grace, we all liked that last bit, living in grace, even though we all had trouble describing what it meant. And one person said, well, that's okay. We'll just get Linda to preach on it, you know, maybe a sermon series every now and then. And I said, oh, no, you won't. No, no, no. But as it turns out, we actually did this in Lent. We had several people stand up and talk about what grace means to them and how they had experienced it in their lives. Some words that were used. Grace is a gift. It is forgiveness. It is mercy and compassion. It is love. It is acceptance. It is God's goodness. It is blessings. And here's the thing about that last line, living in grace. What we have learned since we put it up on a banner and actually talk about it every now and then is that it is enough that God's grace is everywhere and it is enough for me and for you and for all of God's people. God's grace is enough. And I bring this up because sometimes we forget and we act like there isn't enough grace around. We forget that God's grace is amazing that God's grace is overflowing. Sometimes we get it in our heads that grace, God's grace, is limited and that there's only so much to go around. So in order to help God out because God is so busy and really needs our help, we begin to lay down some rules. I got this from a friend some time ago, and I may have shared with the with uh, shared this with you all before, but it's so good I'm going to share it again. This is a discussion between two churches. It's actually a sign war. They would put these things on their church signs between Our Lady of Martyrs Catholic Church and Beulah Cumberland Presbyterian Church. The Catholic Church got things started by putting up on their sign this. All dogs go to heaven. Beulah Cumberland Presbyterian responded by putting up on their sign, Only humans go to heaven. Read the Bible. The Catholic Church sign then said, God loves all God's creatures, dogs included. To which the Presbyterian Church sign said, Dogs don't have souls. This is not open for debate. To which the Catholic Church replied by saying on their sign, Catholic dogs go to heaven. <laughs> Presbyterian dogs can talk to their pastor. <laughs> the Beulah Presbyterian Church put on their sign, converting to Catholicism does not magically grant your dog a soul. The Catholic Church sign said, free dog souls with conversion. The Presbyterian Church said, dogs are animals, there aren't any rocks in heaven either. The Catholic Church got the last word, all rocks go to heaven. <laughs> so now as it turns out, this was an email prank. And the Beulah Presbyterian Church actually put a big disclaimer on their website that said, we do not have a theological position about whether dogs get into heaven or not. It's a prank. Don't believe it. So while this is not true, it's still funny. Because sometimes good church-going people, like you and like me, try to put a limit on God's grace. Who gets it? Who doesn't? Who's in? Who's out? And how much we should get. Or how much the person next to us should get as if we were in charge of this thing called grace. And it's not because we're bad people. 
It's just because that we're human and we have this sense of fairness built into us from when we're children and then go to school and we learn what's fair. And that continues through work with family. It's like when our youngest son, Andrew, he was five and he asked, what time of the day was I born? And we said, you were born at 11.15 a.m. He said, well, what time was Nathan born, his older brother? We said 11.45 p.m. And he said, that's not fair. He got to stay up later than I did. <laughs> and he was serious. Some people take this sense of fairness to an extreme. Maybe you're one of them. You can even find it in the Bible. In this morning's parable, that Jesus tells. And since we just heard it, I'll skip to the end, which is either the good part or the challenging part, depending on who you are and where you are in life. So when the workers who showed up at 5 o'clock came to collect their money, they were paid a full day's wages. Then the workers who showed up at 3 were paid a full day's wage. And at noon and at nine, they too were paid a full day's wage. And then all, all of a sudden, the workers who were the very first to be hired, who had put in a full, hard day's worth of work, came to collect their money. You know how people talk. They saw that it was the same amount of money, and they said, that's not fair. We should get more. We were here longer. We worked harder. And the owner said to them, am I doing anything wrong? Isn't this what we agreed upon? Can't I do what I want with what belongs to me? Now be honest, how many of you, when you hear this story, are a little bothered by it? Oh, no one is bothered by this story. <laughs> Here we go. I will raise my hand. There you go. How many of you, when you hear this story, and we hear this story, it comes around probably once a year, that is not fair. And it's okay. You can admit it. Because it's normal to feel like that. We like to decide who gets what. We all have our own understanding of fairness. Who's in, who's out. Who gets what, who doesn't. I do it. I'm not proud, but I do it. For example, I would love to have control over who wins the lottery. <laughs> I think every person, every winner, should be run by me. And then I can deem if that person is worthy or not. Are you going to start a foundation? You can have the money. Are you going to buy three houses and a yacht? No. I will give that money to someone else. There is a labor strike on. We all know this, right? United Auto Workers against the three top car companies, Ford, Stellantis, which I'd never heard of, but they have 14 different car companies, and General Motors. Maybe some of you saw the interview with the CEO of General Motors. Her name is Mary Barra, and she was defending her $29 million salary package. $29 million. At which point, Brad, who was watching with me, said, how much is enough? A million? Two? And it's not just you or I who do this on occasion. The disciples do it too. In the previous chapter, chapter 19, People are bringing children to Jesus so that he will touch them and give them a blessing. And what do the disciples do? They 
try to turn the children away as if Jesus doesn't have enough blessings to give out, as if the children weren't worthy. And what does Jesus say? You can say it with me. Let the children come to me. When he says this, the disciples learn, and maybe we learn too, that sharing God's grace feels better than withholding it. Because I've done both, and maybe you have too. Sharing God's grace is better than keeping it to ourselves, as if there is not enough. And this is how I'm tying it in to our mission moment today, because I'd like to try to tie a sermon into that mission. Part of living in grace, living in grace, is realizing that it is better to have a mindset of abundance than a mindset of scarcity. And I always walk around and I admit this, I am a worrier and I worry that I don't have enough or that we don't have enough. And then I talk to other people like Mike Willette who says we do have enough. Can't you see it? Why are we keeping it for ourselves? Brad is the one, and I've shared this before, I'm the one with the scarcity mindset, and he is the one with the abundance mindset. And every time we get something in the mail asking for money, because I check the mail first, I put it in the garbage, and he goes through the garbage and takes them out. <laughs> and he gives to absolute everyone for two reasons. He has an abundance mindset. That's the first. And the second, he feels good about sharing the resources that he has. That the resources, whatever they are, maybe you have forgiveness, maybe you have acceptance, maybe you have so much love to share, encouragement and hope, Maybe you have the gift of having just a little bit extra to give to a nonprofit that you love, to the church, to Haiti, to Ghana, to Daisy's children. When you have an abundant mindset, you realize that there is grace everywhere. And it feels better to share it than to keep it. God's grace is enough. There is enough. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I think we'll go right into our offering, because doesn't that sound like it should go right into our offering? Our offering, an opportunity to share who you are and I always tell people when the offering plate comes around, think about what you have to offer God this week. It may be a financial gift. It may be something else. What will you offer to God? And know that your offering blesses others. I invite our newest deacons to come forward. <laughs>
Let us pray. Holy God, help us to see your grace all around us and in our lives. And may we share that grace through these offerings this day to all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Let There Be Peace on Earth. It is number 677, or just bring your paper. We're going to join in the aisles and join hands. 